Welcome back guys. Today we're going to finish up our erase uh, video with a, a function or a way to add to an array. So there's not really a way to add to an array um, with a certain command. Just saying add to this array and putting it in, especially more dynamically like when the file is actually running, when your script is running. So what you're going to have to do is re-declare your array and also preserve the contents that was there before. So uh, <clears throat> let me walk through kind of what this is. First of all, what I'm doing here is just getting all my files on my desktop, as you see right here. And then I'm going to have a for each loop that runs through those files. And what I'm going to do with those files is put them into an array. So uh, here's all the basic stuff. Here is my array. I'm leaving it empty. This obviously can have other values already in it, though. And I'll show you an example of that. Uh, here in the here in a bit, but first of all, the, all this is going to do is create an array of all the files on my desktop. So what we do is say for each file within files, which is this command right here, I want to redeclare this array right here. Also preserve it. What this is doing is keeping all that uh, all the values, I guess you could say, that it had before. Now, what I want to do is get that array and go to the end of that array and add one value. So we're re-declaring our array, but we're adding one more array value to it. So say uh, this already had three, so it was at two right here, it already had three values in it. What this is gonna do is change that to three. Now, that makes a fourth element. So we need to fill that with something. So that's what our second line is doing right here. We're getting, now we're redoing our u bound of our array command just like up here we're going to the end of our array again and we're setting it to what value we want so now that we opened up a spot this is what this is doing is adding a new spot then we can fill it with whatever we want so in this case i'm going to be filling it with all the file names uh, within on our desktop so then it's going to go back up to the top in our for each loop and this is going to equal the next file in our desktop it's going to add one to our array and then set it as the current file so that's how that works Let's go ahead and now message box, let's say our, um, type out our name of our array, and then let's see what the first file on the desktop is, so that'd be array 0. Okay, and that ends up being this right here, which is correct, I have add to array is the first one. What if we want to see all the files within this array? Well, we just learned the join command last lesson, all you'd have to do is put join like that and let's use a delimiter of a line feed okay so let's start this now you'll see I have obviously my two vscripts files and then the desktop file uh, which is hidden so that's on the desktop as well so great way to put all your files within a certain location and you don't have to use this example as using files this would work with any for each loop where you're going through and sifting through certain items and you want to put those into your array. All right, what if you wanted to use an input box to enter in a file? So let's do that right now. So let's go to, and actually I never sh showed you if you already had files in it. So for example, if this already had a name.txt, for example, or, and also test, Dot jpeg so these are two elements that are already in the array it doesn't matter if it's empty or it already has some in it because remember this is going to redeclare it preserve what's already in it and add on to the end of that so whether your array has values in it or not that that shouldn't matter at all all right so let's go ahead now and go to the uh input box so this is just a way i did this real quick to add um to an in, with an input box basically so here we see an array and this time we do have already have values in it you could of course start empty just by doing that but I already have values in this and our array is called animals so here's our array and here is a function that will add to an array with an input box so here you see it me calling the array and I'll tell you why you need to set it up to this first but what you do when you want to add to your array is put whatever your array is called equals add to array animals and then have this function right here so your current array is going to be animals of course so that 
will go into this value and will be distributed everywhere else within this. Now, first of all, we're going to check to see if it is indeed an array just so we don't get any errors. After it is, let's put it into a do loop right here until the value we enter is nothing. So until we hit cancel basically on our input box. Now, uh, the value is going to be an input box and we're going to show what's currently in the array. So that's going to join whatever is currently in this array all together so that we can see it. And the title of our input box is going to say you want to add to this array or not. So again, same as before, we're redeclaring and preserving our old whatever's in our array. We're going to the end of that array and adding a new value so that we can uh, put one in there. So now we go to the end again and we set it to whatever we want. So in this case, value is going to be our input box right here. So we're putting that into there, whatever we type. And it'll keep looping this input box, of course, until we're done which is why we have this do until this value is blank. Then we end if, and then we set our array into our function so that whatever we just put into our array will be put back into our function, which again will be put up here. So now this, all of this right here, will have our new values in it. So now that it has the new values, we want to set it back up to this so that it'll add on those values. Um, so let's go ahead and message box and join animals. Oops, animals right here. Okay, so let's save this, and now you'll see what's currently in the array as you as you see up here, and we can add whatever we want. So let's add a dove to this. You'll see it added to the list just like that. Uh, let's see, pigeon right here, uh, and okay, that's good enough. So if we click OK or Cancel when it's, when it's blank, it will stop that. And then look, our new values, Dove and Pigeon right here, are added to our array. Now, once I run this again, obviously it's going to go back to the original. So this, when you're adding to array, obviously you want to do something with it before your script is over. So, because obviously when you run it again, this array is set up to these values so as you see it doesn't have our old ones in it so you might want to consider writing them down or something whatever you're going to use your arrays for so in this case let's create an object of wscript.show and let's go ahead and run notepad so let's see with this Let's run notepad and then also and let's go ahead and send the keys of our array. So let's join animals. Okay. So here we go. Now now our values will actually be able to be saved into a notepad as you see right here. Of course, this could be, you know, whatever else you wanted. You could use the write command and write it directly into a text file or whatever else you wanted to do. But like, say, when you're running this, as soon as your script is over, because these values have been added in the script, it's not going to change it itself. So you want to do something with them while you have them. So let's run this now. Put our values in there again. Uh, let's put a squirrel. Hit enter and go and now you'll see it'll add all those into our text document so that is how to add to an array guys hope you all learned something and I will see you all next time